Social distancing is exactly what it sounds like. It's keeping your distance, at least six feet, from other people. So working from home, skipping out on happy hours, and avoiding large gatherings, such as concerts. There are a few reasons why officials are asking for this. The first is that many people who have the virus don't know it. In fact, they may even seem perfectly healthy, says medical anthropologist Bonnie Kaiser with UC San Diego. We're starting to get data where maybe 25% of um, infections are uh, or of exposures are happening when people are asymptomatic. That means many people may not realize they're spreading the virus. That's why officials say if there isn't social distancing, the number of people getting sick will grow exponentially. Here's what that looks like. If you double the size of a drop of water every uh, minute, within less than an hour it'll fill a baseball stadium. So for every person who tests positive, another two people could get the virus, and those numbers keep doubling. This rate of growth can quickly become a problem because as the number of people getting sick goes up, so will the number of people who need to go to the hospital. And that's where the phrase flatten the curve comes in, says UC San Diego health economist Jeff Clemens. So one way to think about the health system is that it's there to, ma to manage the flow of patient health needs across the population in the same way that a drainage system is there to manage the flow of water that comes from storms. Now picture what could happen when a surge of patients check into doctor's offices across the country. Remember, we're talking exponential numbers. So the idea behind the social distancing and the flattening out of the curve is essentially an effort to sort of spread out the flow of patients so that it doesn't overwhelm the system like a major storm at any one point in time. Countries around the world are implementing social distancing measures like quarantine in order to reduce the flow of patients into the healthcare system. In Italy, lessons have already been learned. There, last week, nearly 400 people died in just one day. Manuela Raffitello is a scientist at UC San Diego who's also from Italy. So this was just, I think, the tip of the iceberg. The disease has been spreading, and especially started in northern Italy, that I would like to highlight that this is the, the best healthcare in the country and one of the best healthcare system in the world. But Raffatelu says some people didn't take seriously how contagious the virus is, so the disease spread. In the city of Bergamo right now, which is a city, uh, a city near Milan, uh, they started quarantine a little later than other cities, and this one-week delay for the lockdown really cost them a lot. You know, the entire newspaper is basically dedicated to, uh, to people who died, you know, in a very short time. Doctors even in northern Italy are having to make tough calls on who can be seen because medical staff is limited, or they have to decide who can get life-saving supplies that are running out. And economist Jeffrey Clemens says in the United States, the hospital system could easily get overwhelmed as well. The system as a whole, you know, has roughly one million um, hospital beds, of which 100,000 beds are intensive care unit beds. And so in the event that we were to see a surge of COVID-19 um, infections, that system could, could very easily be overwhelmed. And Raffatelli says it's important for people to think about who needs those beds the most. Our parents, our grandparents, uh, our neighbors. And, and so we need to do this even if we are healthy. And remember, flattening the curve isn't about panicking. It's about keeping a safe distance so we can slow down the rate of the virus. Shalina Chalani, KPBS News.